Hello there, welcome back to the Three Hour News Show. Here's the favorite segment, the, um, see the stories. So you are now watching our signature segment and as you keep... Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> been... Hans, Hans has been serenading <laughs> us with the high school in Jakarta. No, because I don't know, that is my uh, warm-up song at the gym. Ah. So, with uh, the whole album of Nikki, um, uh, that actually uh, what I usually hear at the gym <laughs> and also while I was driving. That it. really pumps you to <laughs> work, up, yeah, but, work out, right? You know, with the beat and also the BPM, that actually uh, that fits for my, for my warming up okay. uh, session. But also, uh, that is one of uh, my sister and my favorite songs of both of us. We love that song. And so, I know so. why, because there was something happening during your high school time. <laughs> Tell us about that, would you? Well, uh, <laughs> not really, because uh, we can pretty much relate to what what, what is Nikki told in the song. Yeah. In the song, so uh, high school in Jakarta, sort of modern Sparta, mm -hmm. um, teenage suburban armada, was well, so, something like that. Yeah. So uh, we pretty much relate to that, and uh, we both agree that being. Um, yeah, getting getting uh, 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 educated in high school in mm -hmm. Jakarta mm -hmm. that shaped us to a certain um, uh, uh, how, how do you say it to a certain like s strength or Str exactly strength really and it's really to, to harsh to a certain really network okay now I have a book here it's called Kimchi Confessions I know Kimchi is very sour. <laughs> Although we believe that it, it has something good in it, something healthy that mm -hmm. it contains in it. So we want to know, um, because the author of this book is actually studying abroad. So she didn't really have any um, experience here in Jakarta for her high school. So maybe we can, can, maybe. Add, we can tell her how is it being, how, how sour, was it, how, how sour, sour was that it having yeah. the high school in Jakarta. Exactly. So today we are joined by Sabiera Putri and Nabila Sindhi, the author and content creator who will share her journey as a high school student in South Korea. So please welcome the men. Come on. Hello. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hans. How are you? I'm good. Hi. So, oh, please have a seat. Have, have a seat. Thank you for having us. Of course. Oh. It's, very, oh, it's, it's an honor for us to also have the author of the book yeah. and also the designer so, of the cover. Yeah. So you are Saviera. Correct. Putri and Nabila Cindy. Yeah. And they so, are sisters. Oh, which one is older? Guess, who, guess who looks old, older? Mini, yes. mini, 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 because I, I don't know. <laughs> From the vibe. Uh, should we guess, really? Uh, yes. 50-50 chance. 50, 50, 50. I don't know. Maybe you? you? <laughs> <laughs> it's her. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> Most of the time people get it wrong, that's why we like to ask. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just to make it fun. Uh, okay. Well, with, with women, I would consider <laughs> that as a test. Yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, okay. the book. Christopher, tell us about this. Right? Right, but wait, can you no. uh, can you introduce okay. yourself in please, Korean? Please. Oh, wow. in, can you you oh, speak Korean, right? Oh, yes, yes, so yeah. can you uh, introduce yourself through that camera yeah, uh, in two. Korean, yeah. both of you, uh, one by one? Oh, here, I'm one. sorry. This camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay um, I'll go first. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 안녕하세요. 저는 비에라라고 합니다. 지금 제가 한국에서 인도네시아 학생이고요. 네, 반갑습니다. <웃음> 비에, 플리즈. 네, 비에. 아, 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 나빌라이라고 합니다. 저는 지금 서울에서 UX 디자이너 직장인인데요. 네, 오, 만나서 반갑습니다. 오케이, 오케이, 오케이. 괜찮아. <웃음> This is like them saying something that we, we were like, we're stunned. What was that? Expect so that was actually your intro introduction? Yeah. yeah, it's a simple introduction of okay. who I am, what I'm doing, and living in Korea. Okay. And now, how did you guys end up in South Korea for your high school? Yeah, that is actually a very interesting question because both of us didn't expect actually how we got in there because mm. we started when we were 15 years old actually mm. so we're two years apart so Nubila started her journey a bit earlier um, so what happened was we received a full ride scholarship to mm. attend this both of you yeah both of us yeah so tuition everything was free and it was actually 
a scholarship to one of the most prestigious science high schools in Korea. Wow. Oh, there's a dedicated science high school. Yes, right, right. exactly, right. yeah. Oh. So I, I'll talk about this more later, but mm. it, Korea has a very interesting system in terms of how they handle their education and mm. so forth. Mm. And our journey started there. And it was very interesting because it was a Korean high school, but mm. they also accepted international students. Right. Only a few though, from 100 of students, only around 15 maximum was chosen around like the world. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Mm. And there's actually very little women as well because it's a science um, tech based kind of school. So we only had like what, 20 women from in one, one year. In yeah. one year. In one year. So you're like the very little among that whole batch. Right. <laughs> yeah. Usually there's like 120 total and then 20 are the women. Yeah, exactly. Right. But I know that the, the science gene is actually running on their blood. <laughs> <laughs> from the sister and two siblings here, mm. they're all the scientific ladies. Mm. So I just want to know how challenging was it because the sourness of kimchi sounds like um, you know projecting how challenging it was. Was it really challenging? Mm, I think there are like very different aspects to why it's really challenging. So first of all, I think the education system is really different from here. Mm. So when we went there, uh, usually uh, we have like self-study times to catch up on like homeworks or materials that are covered in class and. Because the level of education system among international students are like different mm. between the Koreans, we also have to like study before we enter the school. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. there's like studying before and then even inside the school, we have to study a bit more because we have to catch up with the other uh, Korean students as well. So focus, focus, focus. Yes, yeah, yes. They very take academics very right. seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think one thing to add to that, besides the academics, is actually um, in terms of identity. Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, we were very young when we came, because you know, like that's when you go to puberty oh. and then you want to try to do everything. But then somehow we were put in a situation of, oh my God, what is going on? Everybody's studying so hard, everybody's so smart. Mm -hmm. And then it was really hard to adjust, especially like on our first years, because as mentioned before, we are minorities, mm. um, girls, and international students mm. who wear the hijab as well. Mm. So we were somehow put into the shoes of someone. Um, it's like what we do represents like the first occurrence of what they think we would be. Like really, yeah, because they've wow. never met someone who are like us. Uh -huh. So we kind of had to represent people who are like us, which was a very tough thing to do because yeah. you know we're still learning, mm -hmm. we're still young. Mm -hmm. But that was actually it's a quite pivotal moment for us. Actually, that's such an ambassador sort of like <laughs> task. But what, uh, do you think? what uh, what I'm really curious about is uh, you put it. In, in words of like us, what is like us? Like uh, uh, girls from Indonesia girls, and into science. Hijabis. I think it's more like, it's kind of like layers. So first international students uh -huh. were very rare and then women mm. were very rare. Yeah. And then Indonesians were very rare. Yeah. And people who identify as Muslims but wear the hijab were very rare. Mm. Because if we wear the hijab, you kind of like obviously show that you are part of that mm. community. Uh, mm. right. So they expect or they kind of have this kind of like mindset or their yeah. first impressions to you mm. much easier than those who don't. Okay, so yeah. so you are the minority of the minority. Right. Yeah, 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 we were the only ones yeah. who were wearing the hijab. So you did not speak the language when you arrived at the yes. first time. Yes. Okay, yeah. how was it? I mean, how did you do uh, or what did you do to basically get into the community, yeah. get accepted? What was the first steps that you, you if you could probably share with others? Uh, in our high school, we had to take some Korean classes, mm -hmm. but even as like a high school student, you have uh, com uh, activities like club activities, and ah. when you're in the club activities, of sure. course you merge with other Korean students, right? Yeah. So for me at that time, I was doing like art club, mm -hmm. and for our art club, we had like a lot of outside of school uh, exhibitions, or like, uh, you know, you have to go on stage and show your work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even uh, inside of school, I interacted with a lot of my Korean friends, but also so outside of the school, we did like uh, face painting strangers. Yeah. So sometimes we would talk to them and then because they know that I wear the hijab and I'm like really young. So they like to ask me like, oh, what are you doing here in Korea? And why are you yeah. in this booth painting my face? Something like that. Yeah. You know, it's really like a very common question too. You know? Yes, yes. And yeah. don't, don't, don't they know that a lot of uh, Indonesians love Korean movies and Korean everything? 
Yeah, before actually when we came, Korea wasn't as popular as it was yeah. now. Which ah. is so it was surprising how when because we are still living in Korea, we're yeah. still building our career there, and as we live there, we can see like the progress mm. of how they view Korea now. Yeah. I remember going home for the first time after my first year there. Not a lot of people were asking. They would they would ask the typical question of is it South Korea or North Korea? Oh wow! Yeah, yeah but then now yeah. everybody wow. like knows so many things. Mm. Even people who read my book know Korean much better than when I came to Korea uh -huh. for the first time. Yeah, and I don't know, and to add to Nabila, so what she mentioned is, that's actually true. It's, um, it's really hard to integrate with the Korean society, even if you can speak Korean. Uh -huh. So one thing that we always remember and we learned from is to always put yourself out there, mm. actually, to just always take the initiative. Um, so like just don't be scared and ask around because you'll never know what will yeah, happen yeah, So yeah. we we followed that kind of like mindset and I think it really helped us till now wow. And do real life and the Korean drama match up? I mean <laughs> they often they often put in the picture students yeah. studying yeah. late um, because of uh, I intense competition, lots of homework. But wearing some fashionable stuff. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and also eating all those, uh, you know, uh, food. Yeah. Tteokbokki, what's up, oh my God. Uh, Does it match? Uh, if, if, it's, if you're talking about like the falling in love with like the hot uh, student in the school, okay, maybe not. That's like, <laughs> a bit too, um, yeah, media. Yeah, but yeah. about the learning late until night, yeah, we used to have that. So we had this thing called chasupsigan, which is like study time. Can you repeat that again? Chasupsigan. <laughs> yeah, chasupsigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds like tipje. No. <laughs> Uh, what, is, what is that again? That's like study time, self-study oh, time. Okay. So usually our class goes from like 9 to 6 p.m. And mm. then at 6 to 7 we have dinner and then 7.30 we go to this designated room and then we study oh. until 7.30 to 9. So you were, stay, you were staying oh. at a dorm or something? Oh. Yes, it, yes, it was a boarding school. school. Oh, yeah. boarding school. Oh. So, okay, you, you said that Koreans, they took the education system really seriously. Mm -hmm. If you can adopt anything that can be applied here that we're probably behind mm. of Korea, what would it be? Uh, okay, um, for me, I think their system of high schools is really interesting. So, Fira mentioned before that we went to this uh, science gifted high school, but mm. they also have a science high school, they also have a sports gifted high school, and they also have a performing arts gifted high school. So depending on what you want to pursue when you grow older, you go to that high school from a young age. Mm. So when yeah. I... I mean, how difficult was it to, to, to choose then? You, you, you already chose your way, which is mm -hmm. science, right? And it had to be decided when you graduated from elementary junior high. Junior high, Junior yeah. high. Junior yeah. high. Yeah. I mean, how, how could that be? I mean, we're in, we Indonesians do not, you know, get used to that. Yeah, that is actually one thing that I realized that is very common in the Korean society that they prepare very, very early on. Mm. So if you see the dramas, like those famous dramas of them studying since they were young, mm. it's actually because they are actually set into what they want to do. So they have to prepare very early to know what they want, what they're good at, what they're somehow passionate about. And from there, they could choose on certain like special schools, as Nabila mentioned. I mean, is there anyone in Korea that does decided to? No, no, no. That's that's not what I want to do. I, I just want to move. Yeah. To can, there, I, can so. I change high school yeah. from science uh, high school to uh, performing art yeah. high school? Oh, oh, yeah, there's actually. Yeah. It's actually common. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, we, you can't really know what happens or how you do it un mm -hmm. until you actually get into True. it. True. Yeah. yeah. So I actually had friends who were in specialized schools um, but then they wanted to pursue art so then they took a gap year or or something else because I think what I realized as well is despite having like a strict curriculum uh -huh. they don't mind taking their time mm -hmm. like even in the university mm. because there's this um, kind of culture here like oh you have to graduate on time true yeah but yeah. then there a lot of people take their time like they would have like five years of university six years of university mm. But with a mindset of, I have to prepare as much as I can, I would rather be fully prepared and yeah. go to the real world yeah. than only graduating for the sake of it. But, mm. I mean, how's life in university? Is it only on the, you know, in the classes or what are different? Do they have like um, maybe sitting in, in some companies or maybe trying out, you know, that field in the real life situation? Mm. Um, oh. 
For our university, we are like a very uh, research institute and also mm -hmm. engineering. So everyone in our university does either science or engineering. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who go to that university want to be researchers. Right. So oh. there's a lot of chances for you to do research from a very young age. So mm -hmm. when you first start a uh, sophomore year, mm -hmm. you, you can already contact the professor and say like, oh, I really loved your class. Can I join your lab mm -hmm. to try Amazing. research? And sometimes uh. they give you like small tasks of like, oh yeah, actually I have this research that's going on and I saw that you have this skill, maybe we can try work something out. Mm -hmm. Or if you're interested in internships or company-based stuff, there's a lot of companies that come to our university as uh -huh. well in job fairs. Yeah. Yeah, I remember going to a lot of job fairs and like, oh, this company looks interesting. Like they do AI wow. stuff and then you just sit and ask like, oh, this is my CV. Like just a very yeah, short CV. And this is the kind of classes <laughs> I took and I'm really interested. Is there a way for me to uh, get experience in this company? So it's really open to what you want to do and like Fira said people don't really know what they want until they try and yeah. people also don't know what they don't want until they try yeah. so yeah usually you go through research and then you realize oh, maybe that's not for me so you want to go to company but in company there's also like you want to be this engineer or that designer yeah. Yeah. so many so, yeah. options yeah. as well okay one, one last question Ooh. before we go on a break just uh, a short answer do people in Korea also get the same uh, opportunities uh, as in for the scholarship uh, as you got? Mm. Oh yeah, so uh, this is actually one thing, like a follow-up with the previous question, it's very connected. I, but one thing that I realized is the Korean government, they are really set into also recruiting foreign talent recently. Mm. Right. So um, of course, um, it's different systems, how they give scholarships to local students and internationals, mm -hmm. but I can see that in certain ways, we do have a lot of um, advantages and almost kind of almost similar opportunities in terms of getting scholarships. Mm. And I think one thing that I wish Indonesia could also adopt more is they really, the government itself, really invests in terms of research, in terms right. of science ah. and academic support. Okay. So students who perform well got, get a lot of merit-based scholarships, mm. a lot of companies mm. do donations. Mm. So it's it's just it's a very nice and cultivating environment. All right. Okay. So we have two Ooh. talents here that you know have been doing their um, uh, expertise in the research mm -hmm. as well. Would they actually be in Indonesia? We don't know. But that's going to be next, <laughs> and it's always worth it to try yes. the spicy and sour kimchi. Mm -hmm. We we'll talk with them after the break. So stay tuned. Fermented one. Oh, <laughs> every kimchi is fermented though. Yeah. <laughs>